Hello, and welcome to the program. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. Today, I want to talk to you about what it means to have clean hands and a pure heart. And this is something that every Christian needs to have in the very forefront of their thinking all the time. What it means to have clean hands and a pure heart. And we're going to start by looking at Psalms 24, 3 through 6. It says, Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. For this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Now we have to understand that as believers who are born again, those who are you know, blood-bought and uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. We have to live our lives according to God's word, according to his commandments. And we have to know that the flesh is going to rise up all the time to try to get you into uh, Satan's bait. Well, that's when we have to rise up and say, you know what? I'm not going to allow my flesh to dictate to me how I'm supposed to live, how I'm supposed to talk, how I'm supposed to walk, how I'm supposed to do things. No, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. And we have to make the declaration that I'm going to be a person who has clean hands and a pure heart. I'm going to walk in holiness. And holiness means being set apart to God. It's you love what God loves and you hate what God hates. And we have to be those whose hands are clean, whose hearts are pure before the Lord. Because if, they're, if our hands are dirty, if our hearts are impure, that's how the devil is an upper hand in our life. That's how we get into all the troubles and the messes that are out there because we try to hobnob with the world. Well, no, we're in this world, but we're not to be of it. We're to be lights in the dark place. We're to occupy until he comes. We're to do business, but we're not to be those who hobnob with the world. We're not supposed to, you know, align ourselves with their their philosophies, their, their ways of thinking and living and acting, the places they go, the things they do. No, we're supposed to be of a different kingdom. We're of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of righteousness, those whose hands are clean, whose hearts are pure before God. And those that says that who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place. Well, it's not those who have impure hearts. It's not those whose hands are dirty. They're outside of God's, you know, perfect will. They're allowing the devil. And I'm talking about even Christians who allow the enemy to have an upper hand in their life because they refuse to have clean hands and a pure heart. They want to hobnob with the world. They want to do the things that the world does and not think they're going to suffer the consequences. They will. And it says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? Well, here's the one. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, and who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. See, those are the ones, it says, are going to receive the blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It says, we are the ones that are supposed to seek his face. And that's one of the key areas that we're going to be able to walk in this place with clean hands and a pure heart. By seeking the face of the Lord, by coming into that higher realm of intimacy, because the highest calling of a Christian is intimacy with God, worshiping him, loving him, honoring him, just soaking in his presence, putting him first, being like Mary of Bethany who sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word while her sister Martha was so busy with things. And we can't be busy with things, you know, even if they're things of God, if we're not spending time first with God, just worshiping him. So that's how you're going to be able to come into that place where your hands are clean, your heart is pure. When you're spending time with God, when you are being aligned to his kingdom, the way he does things, the way his kingdom works. Because the kingdom of darkness wants to try to crowd out your time. The kingdom of darkness wants to cause you to do all kinds of things that are going to cause you to miss out on what God wants to do. So that's why it's important that we understand what the word of God says when it says we are to be having clean hands and a pure heart. That that the character of the godly are those who walk in alignment with his word. Those are the ones who are going to be able to ascend into the hill of the Lord. And those are the ones who will be able to come into his presence, to stand in his holy place. Because we can't truly stand in the in God's holy place if we're coming with dirty hands, if our hearts are impure, if we're just thinking that that God's going to overlook those things. That's one thing to come and say, you know what, Lord, I, I, I have messed up and I want you to forgive me. And you're coming with, you know, in repentance. But some people, they, they just think repentance is a bad word. And they just think that they're going to come into God's presence. They're going to come into prayer. And they're just going to come, you know, with impure motives. 
and their hands are dirty, and they think, well, I don't have to repent of that, but God has to listen to me. No, God does it. God's word says what it means, and he means what it says. And we have to be those who have that understanding that if we want to receive the blessing of the Lord, if we want to walk in that place one on one with him, in that place of true intimacy, then we're going to have to make sure that our hearts are pure before him and that our hands are clean. In Psalms 26, 4 through 12, it says, I have not sat with idolatrous mortals, nor will I go in with hypocrites. I've hated the assembly of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not gather my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, and whose hands is a sinister scheme, and whose right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me, for my foot stands in an even place. In the congregations, I will bless the Lord. See, that has to be our declaration. I'm not going to sit, you know, in the uh, assembly of those who are hypocrites, those who are walking in just all kinds of idolatry, those who say they're Christians, but they, they give heed to false doctrine and they won't turn from it to save their lives. No, because if you're giving heed to false doctrine, if you're hobnobbing with those who give heed to false doctrine, those who are, are in all sorts of idolatry, then that, that, that's, that, those, there's transference of spirits and those foul spirits attached to them will try to get on you to try to corrupt your relationship with God, to try to you know, get you into that place where your eyes are on things and they're not on God. Well, that's not supposed to be. We're has to, our eyes have to be on God. We have to put him first, put him, his word, his presence first above all. It says, I will wash my hands in innocence and then so I can go about your office. So we have to have, wash our hands in innocence. Again, having clean hands and a pure heart. It says that we have to love his habitation, the place where his glory dwells. Well, God's glory is not going to dwell in a place where there's impurity, where there's a place where there's dirty hands, where there's unrepentant hearts, people who just think that they can live like the devil and that God will overlook that. No, God doesn't overlook that. He wants us, because we do have free will. If you, if you don't want to repent, then you have that choice. But guess what? You're not going to receive God's blessings. You're not going to be able to see the manifestation of his presence. He's not going to be able to speak to you the way he wants to. It's not that God's limited in himself. No, God, there's no limits in God. But people, think about it. People put limits on God through their disobedience, through their unrepentant lifestyle. And this is something that it should not be. We need to be those who repent. Yes, because repentance is something that is a daily thing because we're still in fleshly bodies and, and we still have the opportunity to give in to those things. But the rejoicing part is you don't have to give in those things because you can learn to be led by the Spirit of God. You can know how to crucify your flesh and to bring it into submission to God's will so that you can have clean hands and a pure heart. It says that those who am a are uh, the bloodthirsty men. It says, in their hands is a sinister scheme. Their right hand is full of bribes. And those who are walking in all kinds of sorts of uh, idolatries and evil evil surmisings and all these types of things, guess what? They have all, their hands are full of bloodshed. Their hands are full of uh, the things that the devil, you know, delights in. Well, we can't delight in those things. We can't even be tied to those things or people that want to be tied to them and won't repent. Since we have to be like what it says in 11. But as for me, see, we have to make that declaration. As for me, I will walk in my integrity. Think about it. And then 12, my foot stands in an even place. So we have to stand on high ground because God's kingdom is always on high ground. We have to soar above the circumstances of life. We have to soar above all the negativity that's out there and only align ourselves with the truth, which is God's word. And we have to refuse all the other stuff because those things are going to try to come in. But we don't have to allow them to build on the inside of us. What we build on the inside of us is God's word. See, that's what we have to really understand. In Psalms chapter 1, 1 through 3, which meshes perfectly with what we just read in Psalms 26. It says, blessed, notice that word blessed, is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law or the word of the Lord. And in his law or his word, he meditates day and night. 
He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Not by it shall, but there's a condition there because the Lord preached cause and effect. And if we want God's results, we have to do it God's way. And you want his blessings because even though God's love is unconditional, his promises are conditional upon us walking in obedience to them. His blessed, I mean, highly favored is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, I mean, those who are the wicked, those even so-called Christians who, who uh, fall back into the ways of the world. He says, we're not going to stand in, the, in the, their path. We're not going to sit with them and, you know, take heed to their step. No, we're going to be those who delight in God's word, those who meditate in this word day and night. And when we do, guess what? It said, we're going to be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. It means we're going to... We're going to be those who are not moved. We're not shaken when things come. When every little, um, uh, you know, uh, new bad news comes. You know, uh, all kinds of threats that that are out there in this world. Those things won't shake us. Why? Because we're founded upon the rock of God's word. We're planted in the soil of His kingdom. We're walking forth with clean hands and a pure heart. Why? Because our eyes are on Him. Our eyes are not on the things of this world. Our eyes are not on our, you know, uh, ourselves. Our eyes are on God. And we're walking as close as we can in purity to him. Yes, we're going to make mistakes. That's why we need the blood. That's why we need to have this word built on the inside of us. But the closer you are to God and the more you're in his presence, the more you're in his word, guess what? Then the less you're going to do all those other things. But if you do, guess what? You have to know that there is repentance available. Absolutely. But if you think that you're just going to do it your way and you're going to think that just because you said a sinner's prayer, you know, a number of years ago or whatever, that that is going to, you know, just, um, uh, you know, exempt you from walking in righteousness and holiness. Well, you're sadly mistaken. We have to walk in righteousness and holiness. We have no righteousness of our own, but we have his righteousness, the righteousness of Christ Jesus. When he went to the cross for us and suffered all that in our place. So we are righteous in him. That's not being arrogant. That's just speaking what the Bible says. Now, in our own self, we're not, but in him, we are. So, yes, we are righteous. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. We are those who are a part of the royal priesthood remnant. And as such, we have to walk on this narrow path with clean hands and a pure heart. And if we're not, then we need to repent and get back on track. And that's just the, the truth. And we have to understand this. And Psalms, and we're looking at a lot of Psalms because this really, really, you know, uh, just gets it. I mean, there's other places in Scripture, and, you know, we're going to get to some of those. But Psalms really brings it out about this understanding about, you know, being those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Psalms 15, 1, and 1 through 5, it says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill? And here's the one. He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own heart and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. These will never be shaken. But the key is we have to do those things. We have to walk in that understanding. Again, this is just like what we read in Psalms 24. If you want to abide or dwell or sojourn in God's tabernacle, in his presence, in his house of glory, then you, and if you want to dwell in his holy hill, then you have to walk uprightly. You have to walk in his righteousness. You have to speak the truth. If we speak lies, if we speak half-truths or, or whatever, then guess what? We're not walking in that place uh, being one with him. We won't be able to dwell in his tabernacle. We won't be able to descend his holy hill. And that should be the place that we want to be every day. But so many people are not. It's because their their hearts and their hands are unclean. They're unpure. They they hit, they're into all kinds of stuff, and they just think that you know because they're Christians that they are you know they're just invincible from the devil's you know stains and his deceit. Well, no, they're not. Every one of us have an opportunity to give in to the devil, but you can say no, devil. I'm not going to give in to what you have to to offer me, and I'm going to stand upon God's word. See, this is something we have to do. We have to be those who are not backbiters, those who are not who who um, uh, take up reproaches against our friends, those who just you know 
do what we want to do and think that God has to deal with them, like I said earlier. No, we have to be those who walk in righteousness. That means right standing with God. Those who walk according to his ways of doing and being right. Those who walk in, like I said, in holiness, being set apart to him. You know, being those who are obedient to his commandments. And if we do mess up, then we repent and we get back up and stand again on the high ground of the kingdom. But to think that we can just, you know, do what we want to and they think we're going to receive the full reward of the blessing. Well, that's just, you know, ignorance gone to see. We have to walk according to the full counsel of this word. And we have to love this word because God and his word are one and the same. A lot of people don't have a love for the word. They don't have a love for being in God's presence. Let me tell you, it's the most awesome place to be. Spending time soaking in his presence, loving him, worshiping him. That's the highest calling is to love Jesus, to honor him and to be in his word. But if you're not, and that's how you're going to get into that other place, the opposite side, where you're going to be in that place of impurity, that place where the filthiness of the flesh, the filthiness of this world will try to attach to you. It will try to rub off on you. And that's what the devil's counting on. Well, don't allow that to be. You choose to be a person of the word, a person of the presence, the presence of the Lord. And guess what? Then you'll be in that place where your hands are clean, your hearts are pure, and you can come into God's presence and you can dwell in his holy hill. See, that's what we have to the place we have to be. That's the place we need to get to. In Psalms 119, 9 through 16, says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. See, when we take heed according to God's word, that's how we're going to be able to cleanse our way. That's how we're going to be able to walk on that narrow path of life. That's how we're going to have clean hands, a pure heart. By taking heed according to God's word. And think about it. Jesus is the word. He's the living word. And we take heed to what he says, the way he tells us to live, to walk, to act. And guess what? Then we'll be able to have clean hands and a pure heart. And we need to stay on that path. He goes on to say, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So we have to hide God's word in our heart and not let the devil or people or situations try to take it. Because they'll try to take it. When that word is planted in your heart, the enemy's going to try to come in to put his web of deceit in front of you. See if you'll take his faith. Well, don't take it. You keep the word of God hidden in your heart and coming out of your mouth in faith. That's going to be ammunition to put the devil to fly. It says, blessed are you, O Lord. So teach me your statutes. With my lips, I've declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. It's what to meditate on God's word. True biblical meditations, pondering his word, getting it in our spirits, in our ear gates, our eye gates. That's how we're going to build on faith. As it says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not by having heard once and then just one note. By hearing and hearing and hearing and then putting into practice what the word says. And then 16 says, I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget your word. See, a lot of people have forgotten the word of God. Oh, they may hear a sermon, but then they go away and they forget what they heard and they don't put it into practice. And that's why their hands end up being filthy. That's how their hearts are being impure because they won't allow the word to get planted on the inside of them. We need this word daily. We need to spend time in prayer in, in, in God's presence, loving him, worshiping him, honoring him, learning to hear his voice, and then walking in obedience to what he says. So we have to delight ourselves in his statutes, means his commandments, his precepts. That's how we're going to walk on that pathway of purity and holiness. In Psalms 101, 1 through 8, notice what David said, and this needs to be our declaration as well. He says, I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will behave, my, I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. So we have to have a perfect heart. It means perfect in the sense that our hearts are blameless before him. It means our hearts are pure before him. Now, now notice verse 3. And we have to make this declaration. We have to do it. God's not going to do it for us. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. So we can't let the filthiness of this world, people who want to tell dirty jokes, people who want to live and talk and act like the devil, people who think that it's okay for Christians to curse and get drunk and all this stuff. No, it's not. It says, I will set nothing wicked, means wicked, means worthless, abominable, before my eyes. And I hate the work of those who fall away. It will not cling to me. 
Doesn't matter even if they say they're Christians. No, we're, we're, to, dis- we're to despise that filthiness. We're to cling to God and His Word. It says, A perverse heart shall depart from me, and I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. So we can't just think that, well, you know what, God, I'm... Yes, we witness to people, absolutely, but if they refuse to receive the counsel, then just like the old saying says, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can tell them what the word says, but it's up to them to receive it. If they don't, then we need to, you know, move on. Like it says in Matthew, don't cast your pearls before swine, because if you do, then they're going to want to turn around and, and tear you in pieces. They want to try to talk you out of what you believe. They want to tear down your testimony. Well, don't put the, the, those deeper things of God before them to trample upon. You give them the truth. If they want more, then guess what? Absolutely. But if they don't, then you need to move on. But you stay in that place where your hands are clean and your heart's pure. It says, my, eye, my eyes, think about it, my eyes shall be on the faithful of the land that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. And he who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. So we have to make sure that we are in total divine alignment to this word. That means if we have to um, uh, remove certain people and situations from our lives, we do it. Because there's a lot of toxic things out there, even toxic relationships. Things that are that are poisoning your walk with God. Well, those things need to be moved out. As we, we looked at recently, we have to disconnect from the world and focus on God. That's how you're going to walk in that place where your hands are clean, your hearts are pure. And it's a daily process. It's a daily thing. It's not just once a year, or once a week, or, or once a month. It's a daily process because Satan is the God of this world. And, and he is going to every day, you know, he's going to try to entice you to get on his side. That's why we need to daily be immersed in God's work, God's work, daily immersed in his presence so that we have the ammunition. So we know how to successfully fight the devil and to get him out of our business so that we can walk in that place of purity. So we can be true lights in a dark place. So we can. So when people see us, they see the anointing of God upon us and they, and they want to know more. So that, that's how people are going to be drawn to the kingdom. That's one way, is they're going to see how that we're living in joy, we're living in peace, we're living in, in all these nice things because of who we serve and because we are serving him faithfully with the best to the best of our ability. That's going to draw people because they're going to want what we have. But if we are walking you know, just like the world and we don't look no different for them, why are they going to want what we have? They're dumb. They don't. That's why we need to understand this having clean hands and a pure heart. In Proverbs 4, starting at 14, it says, Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of the evil. Of evil, excuse me. Avoid it, do not travel on it, turn away from it and pass on. Means don't even give it heed. Just, okay, when you see that, 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 that uh, pathway of evil, that pathway of unrighteousness you need to oh, turn the other way because if you even step upon it guess what then you're going to give the enemy a legal right to come in and to wreak havoc it says talk about these evil people for they do not sleep unless they've done evil and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence but notice verse 18 but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day but the way of the wicked is like darkness, for they do not know what makes them stumble. Think about it. And I read the 19. This is something that we have to have in the very forefront of our thinking, the forefront of our minds on a daily basis. Because every day we have an opportunity to choose which path we're going to take. Are we going to take the path of the wicked or are we going to take the path of the just? Well, we're supposed to be those who are just. It means those who are in right standing with God. Because the Bible says the just live by faith. He's those who are justified before God because of the blood of Jesus, for what Jesus did on the cross. But if we take the other path, then guess what? By our own free will, we have chosen to walk in that place where the enemy can have a free reign and cause us to have our hands dirty and our hearts impure. So it's up to us to choose which path we're going to take. Well, we better take the path that is like the shining sun that will shine brighter into the perfect day. And that day is getting closer and closer as we, as we are moving 
into that next realm, that next that next place, that next phase. And if you want to be one who is uh, a part of the eternal body of Christ, those who are going to be glorified and raptured, then you need to make sure that you're on his path, that you're on God's path, and your hands are clean and your hearts are pure before God. In Proverbs 6, 16 through 19, it says, These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. I notice these abominations to God. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Are you one of those? Have, you, have any of these described uh, your conduct, your actions, or the actions of someone you know? And I'm talking about, am I even talking about those in the world? Are you talking about Christians? Well, if it is, then you need to repent. This, these are people whose hearts are not clean before God. Their hands are filthy. Notice he says that hands that shed innocent blood. Well, if your hands have shed innocent blood in any way, shape, or form, then guess what? You need to repent because your hands are not right before God. Your heart is not right. All these things, proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart devising wicked plans, feet swift and running to evil, uh, the false witness who speaks lies. And notice this last one, and this is one that is just um, rampant in the church. I'm not talking about even the world. You know that, but in the church. One who sows discord among brethren. Most brethren means those who are members of, of uh, God's people, his body. And there's so many out there sowing discord. But they think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm okay, you know what? I'm right before God because you know I pay my tithes and I I pray and I do this and I do that. But a lot of it is to be seen by men. Yes, we're to do all these things, but if you're have a wrong heart motive in doing them, then all it is is just to show before men. As Jesus said, you know what? All the what the Pharisees and the Sadducees they did a lot of things. They they paid their tithe, they they fasted, all these things, but they did it to be seen by men because that's the what the glory they wanted to receive. They wanted the praises of men. Well, we're not to be those who have the praises of men. We need to be those who go forth unto God, not because we want to be seen by man, but we want to be pleasing to God because we love him and want to worship him and honor him in every way. But so many want to just do things to be seen by people. And that's the reward they get. Well, if you want to be rewarded by God and walk in his blessings, then you need to be those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Not one who sows discord, not one who who um, uh, lies and thinks that your your uh, haughtiness and your pride is going to get you a brownie point in the king brownie points in the kingdom of God is not. No, we have to be those who are totally connected to this word, and we're not going to be shaken from it. And that's just where the rubber meets the road. In Matthew five eight, Jesus said. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Think about it. Blessed are the pure in heart. Remember, we have to have clean hands and a pure heart. He said, we're blessed when our hearts are pure before him. We are the ones when we're, our hearts are pure. And you and I, if our hearts are pure, truly, he says we're going to see God. It means we're going to see God in his fullness. We're going to see his manifest presence in all his glory. But if our hearts are impure and we don't repent, of all the filthiness of the world, the things that we've gotten into, then guess what? Then we're not going to be able to see God because God is not in an atmosphere of uh, unrepentance. He's not in an atmosphere where our hands are dirty. No, he, he is grieved and he flees. But when you come into his presence and you repent of wrongdoing, and you come before him with an humble heart, guess what? Then his presence will manifest and you'll see his glory. And that's something that is awesome, but it's going to take. Yes, yeah, saying, yeah, Lord God, I want to have clean hands and a pure heart. And I repent, you know, of whatever sin, whatever thing that I've given into that is displeasing to you. This is something that we really have to have a, a stronger understanding about. That need, people need more teaching on this. But a lot of people won't because they're just in all kinds of other stuff. Well, we need to have this teaching. We need the whole counsel of God's word, not just a little certain subjects that tickle our flesh, but the whole counsel of God's word, even the things that grate upon us. Because we need those things so that we can walk in that place where we are complete in God, where we are established in his righteousness, we're established in the full measure of his truth, the width, the length, the depth, the height, the breadth, the exceeding greatness of God's power. Think about it. In Psalms 51.10, it 
This was David's uh, proclamation, his declaration, and it should be ours too. It says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me, our right spirit. When you say, Lord God, create in me a clean heart. Because we can't do it on our own, but we can say, we can call on, upon God and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I repent of anything that's in my heart that doesn't please you. As it says in another song, Lord, search me and know my ways. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there's any wicked way in me, lead me in the way of everlasting. Just take those nasty things and, and throw them away. And lead me in your pathway, the pathway of clean hands and a pure heart. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right or a steadfast spirit. A spirit that's unshakable, that won't give in to the dictates of the flesh, but will flee those things and will allow the Holy Spirit to operate. In Galatians, it says that we are to... Walk in the spirit, so we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, because the flesh and the, and the spirit are contrary to each other. That's why we need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and say, flesh, you line up with the word of God. We have to discipline our flesh and bring it into submission to God's word. And that's something we do daily. In 1 John 2, 3 through 6, and then 15 through 17. So it's by this, now by this we know that we know him, but not Jesus. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him, and by this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. So if we say that, we're abiding in him. Then we have to walk as he walked. And Jesus walked with clean hands and a pure heart. He only did what the Father said. He walked in obedience to the commandments of the Father. And we need to walk in obedience to the commandments of Jesus, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And but, but if we say, oh, I know him, and we don't keep his commandments, then the Bible says we're liars. The truth is not in us. If we truly know him, then we're going to walk according to his word. And his word, his love will be perfected in us. And that's how we showed it be those who have clean hands and a pure heart. We have to walk as he walked. And that's going to take spending time in his presence and prayer and worship unto him and in his word. And then 15 through 17 says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever. Those, the, those who do the will of God. And the will of God is his word. Those are the ones who abide forever. Those are the ones who have clean hands and a pure heart. Those are the ones who receive all the many crowns at the judgment seat of Christ once we are raptured. But there's going to be many who are not going to have any crowns to lay at his feet. Why? Because they, their hands are dirty. Their hearts are impure. And they are in love with this world. No, we're in this world, but we're not to be of it. It says, if we love the world, then God's love is not in us. It says, that all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father. It's of the world. And those things are going to pass away. But one thing won't. God's word will never pass away. His word abides forever. And those who do his word, and remember, God is his word, we will abide forever. So really, I want you to take this seriously and examine yourself. If there's anything in your life, anything in your heart that's impure, that's not in agreement with God's word, then you need to search yourself. And repent and give those things to God. Allow his blood to cleanse you. Allow his holy presence, his word to wash you. So that you can come before him in that place of times of intimacy and worship with clean hands and a pure heart. Because that's God's perfect will for you, for you and I. And we need to understand this on a daily basis. That we can't just come before him and think well, we're going to enter his presence and our hands are dirty, our hearts are impure. It's not going to work. He's not in that atmosphere. But when we truly repent and we come before him and our hands are clean, our hearts are pure then we can be able to come into his presence and to spend that time and hear his voice clearly because that's how the atmosphere of glory will be enveloping around you in that place of purity and cleanness. And it's all because of the word and because of his Holy Spirit. So we're going to take this seriously. So do that check and make sure that your hands are clean, your hearts are pure, so that you can walk on that wonderful narrow path, the path that leads to life. And that way you give the enemy a black eye and you'll continue until... The Lord calls us home. And like I said, it's getting closer and closer. And you need to be ready every day. So from this day forward, make sure your hands are clean, your hearts are pure, and start walking on this beautiful pathway. Because the path of just is the one that shines brighter and brighter into the perfect day. 
like I said, that day is getting closer and closer. And you need to be expecting it and in, in, in love with the Lord because that's the highest calling you'll ever have is intimacy with God. So really take this seriously. And remember, Isaiah 40, verse 8. The word of God stands forever. Amen.